As the title of the video suggests, this is going to be one of the easiest integrals you'll ever solve. And it's going to be pretty interesting too. So how are we actually going to approach this? Well, we're going to introduce something that we call a phase shift. Now, a phase shift comes in pretty handy when integrating trig functions. And what I'm talking about over here is a substitution going from the x world to another variable's world. Let's call it a variable t. So I'm going to let pi by 2 minus x equal t. So this is the uh, substitution that our integration is based on. And if I differentiate implicitly, I'm going to get negative dx equal to dt. And I can just shift around this negative sign as well. So what consequences does this have for our integral? Well, that means our integral now becomes the integral from... Now, what are the limits of integration? Well, when x is 0, then t equals pi by 2. So that's your lower limit. And when x is pi by 2, then pi by 2 pi by, minus pi by 2 is 0. And of course, you have this negative sign because of the uh, negative dt term. And so you have the square root of the tangent of, before it was x, and now it's uh, pi by 2 minus t, and you're integrating with respect to t. Now, the upper and lower limits look really weird. So I can just interchange them or switch them up by adding another negative sign that will convert this negative into a positive. And I now, ha and I, and I now have the uh, square root of, look what happens here, look what happens here. This is the tangent of pi by 2 minus t. When you introduce such a phase shift in your trig function, the trig ratio gets converted into a co-ratio, gets converted into its co-ratio, that is. That means you go from tangent to cotangent. So you now have the cotangent of t, and you're integrating with respect to t from 0 to pi by 2. And that's the new shape of your integral, or that's the new structure of your integral. So this is what you get after the phase change, right? This is what you get after that. So what was the original integral? Well, the original integral that I'm going to write down in uh, red is the was the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the tangent of x with respect to x. Now, both of these expressions represent the same integral i, correct? And the only difference here, even, I mean, look, even the limits of integration are exactly the same. So the only difference here, the only difference here is the name of the variable. One has an x with it. Sorry about that. One has an x as the variable's name and the other has a t as the variable's name. So if the difference is in name only, we can name the variable whatever we want, right? So let's just name this as, name the variable of integration here, x. So now you have two expressions for i, two equivalent expressions for i, that are both in the x world, and you're integrating uh, on the same interval. So if I add these two up, I'll get twice of i, equaling the integral from 0 to pi by 2, now, because the limits of integration are exactly the same, I can add up the functions inside to get the square root of tangent x plus the square root of the cotangent of x, and I'm integrating with respect to x. Okay, this is great, but what or how does it make life easier for us? Well, I think I've done this in a couple of videos already, so I'm just going to write the uh, tangents and cotangents in terms of the sine and cosine functions. So you have the square root of sine of x divided by square root of cosine x plus the square root of cosine x divided by the square root of the sine of x. And uh, you can divide by 2 as well, right? So I'm just going to write this as i equals 1 half of this integral. And we're integrating from 0 to pi by 2. Now with just a bit of simplification, you can now write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 sine of x plus the cosine of x divided by the square root of the product of sine x cosine x. Now, how do we solve this integral now? Well, I, I have solved this uh, integral a couple times before, I believe, and here's the trick that I used if you haven't seen it yet. So I'm about to perform a substitution going from the x world to the u world, say, and I know 
I know that I want the numerator to look like the differential of the variable u. Okay, cool, that's what I know. So I have, there are two steps, right, of a substitution, right? You first of all write down the substitution, that's step one. Then you differentiate implicitly to get differentials, that's step two. So I know about step two. I know what, what my step two should look like. It should look like sine x plus cosine x dx equal to du. And from here, I can actually work backwards to figure out my, uh, my actual u substitution. So sort of integrating will give you uh, the negative of cosine x plus sine x. And this is all going to be equal to the variable u that I needed. And no, you do not need the constant of integration here because uh, this is step one. So you basically did the substitution, then you differentiate it implicitly. So no, you do not need any constant of integration, constant of integration in this case anyway. So that deals with the numerator. The numerator is now the differential of u. But what about the cross term down here? So the cross term, I can get the cross term from my u sub by just writing down the u sub as sine x minus cosine x. And I can get cross terms when I square the sum or difference of two things, right? So that's going to be equal to sine square x plus cosine square x minus 2 times sine x times the cosine of x. And already you see the magic because this is always going to be 1, right? And if I take this uh, twice the cross term onto the other side, if I shift it to the other side, I'm going to get 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x equal to 1 minus uh, this term, which is just the square of my u variable, correct? So all I need is to do a bit of modification, and that is to add a... 2 in the square root down here, and hence multiply by square root 2 as well. So now the numerator is uh, the square root of 1 minus u squared, and this is all just du, right? And I've already written that. Cool. So uh, also, of course, the limits of integration need to be uh, need to be changed as well. So the, the new limits of integration, what are the new limits of integration? Well, when x equals 0, when x equals 0, you get negative 1 plus 0 equal to u, which implies that u equals negative 1. So that's your lower limit. And when x equals pi by 2, this is a 0 and this is a 1. So your upper limit is equal to 1, correct? So now your integral is that of uh, square root, uh, i equals square root 2 by 2 times the integral from a oh, negative 1 to positive 1 of du divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. And we all know what this is. This is just the uh, sine inverse function, right? So two square root 2 by 2 times the inverse sine uh, of u from 1 to negative 1. And we know what this will work out to the inverse sine of 1 is pi by 2, and that of the negative 1 is negative pi by 2. So two negatives will give you a positive. So this works out to the square root of 2 times 2 times pi. And that definitely deserves a like and subscribe. So please make sure to do that. And I hope you liked the video. I find this a very useful trick for evaluating uh, integrals involving trig functions, definite integrals involving trig functions, of course. So thank you. See you next time.